Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. Today we're going to be jumping into our next chapter, chapter 10.1, and that's going to cover solid geometry. This entire chapter 10 is all about three-dimensional shapes. Uh, we've been using two-dimensional shapes throughout our entire geometry career so far. It's time to jump into the third dimension a little bit. Um, game plan for today, we'll look at, uh, we already looked at a warm-up problem um, in class, so we'll look at the lesson. Three-dimensional shapes are going to be made up of several things, vertices, edges, and faces. A vertex is going to be a location where several edges meet. If you look at this diagram here, vertex, think of a vertex as a point. It's a single point in space. Um, it's where several edges, several sides might meet one another. A vertex is zero-dimensional. It does not have any dimension. It doesn't take up any width. It doesn't take up any depth, and it doesn't take up any height. So we say that it doesn't take up any space at all. That's different than an edge. An edge is going to be a single line segment, and it's going to take up one dimension. This red edge that we have in the background does have height, but it does not have width or depth. The edge, let's say right here that I'm highlighting, it does have depth, but does not have width or height. Um, we have some other ones that have some width. Like this one back here has some width, but it does not have height or depth. It always has one of those dimensions, but not necessarily the others. Last thing we're looking at is face. Think about the faces of a um, six-sided die. If you're going to play Monopoly, you're rolling a die. You have six faces. They're two-dimensional fi figures, and they're going to be flat surfaces. There are several different terms that we're going to be using throughout this chapter. Um, first type of shape that you see here is going to be called a prism. And a prism is defined, it's, it has a couple of unique properties to it. It has polygonal bases. And what I mean by that is the bases on top and bottom, these ones are triangles. They could be squares, trapezoids, uh, hexagons, nonagons, twentygons. Could be any shape um, that's a polygon. The other thing that these uh, prisms have specifically, they have uh, parallelogram lateral faces. If you think about uh, biology and anatomy, um, you talk about or you talk about lateral being on the side of things. This side right here, this front face, is a, a lateral face. So are the right and the left ones. Um, lateral faces are the ones that are not the bases, essentially. And those lateral faces are going to be, like I said, parallelograms. Next up, we have a cylinder. Cylinders are defined by a couple of things. First off, they have some circular bases, as you see up here, top and bottom. They also have one rounded face. If you've ever taken a label off of a can or a bottle, you might have noticed that the label you take off turns out to be a rectangle. Um, the rectangle has the same height as the cylinder, and it happens to have the same width as the circumference of the cylinder. Distance all the way around the cylinder is how big the rectangle will be when you unfold it. So rectangular, I'm not going to say a lateral face, but it has a lateral surface because it's rounded. The face is rounded. Next up top, or next on the bottom here, number three, we have a pyramid. A pyramid is defined as having uh, still a polygon base, one single polygon base. That's a big difference. Prism had two polygonal bases. Uh, poly this one's only going to have one polygon base. Notice the lateral faces. Rather than being parallelograms, lateral faces are triangles this time around. Um, all the sides are triangles. Think about the Great Pyramids of Egypt. We have some triangles there. Last thing we have up here, a cone. A cone is kind of a unique shape insofar as it doesn't break down into any <laughs> convenient shapes. Um, granted, it does have a circular base. It also has a rounded lateral surface. Um, the lateral surface turns out to be a portion of a circle. It might be almost a full circle. It might be a piece of a circle, um, depending on how tall the cone is. 
we'll look at that a little more in class. But the uh, the general net of the cone looks something like this, where you're given a circular base, and then the rest of it kind of comes down, comes out at a point. It's going to look something like that, where this portion will wrap around the circle, and these two sides are going to meet to make the rest of the cone. If you have an opportunity, try to take one of those paper cups apart that make a cone. Uh, you'll see this type of this type of structure. If you do that. Um, so, so we could just say it's a rounded lateral surface. There are several names for these things. We always name these things, um, these shapes, off of their number of ba number of sides on the base and their type of three-dimensional shape. For example, up here we have a triangular prism because the bases are triangles, and it's a prism. It has two polygon bases, and sides are all parallelograms. Down here we have a pentagonal pyramid. We say that because we have a pentagon base, and all of the sides are triangles. They're all meeting at one single vertex as well. We can name a few of these others. Next one up is going to be a rectangular prism because the base is a rectangle. It's a prism. We have a polygon or pentagonal prism because it's a pentagon on the bottom and it's a prism. Hexagonal prism. Uh, you could also hear you also hear this pronounced hexagonal prism sometimes. On the bottom here, we have a triangle base and it's a pyramid, so triangular pyramid. Rectangle base and it's a pyramid, so rectangular pyramid. And last one up, we have a hexagon base and it's a pyramid, so hexagonal pyramid. If we want to classify some of these figures, naming the edges, vertices, and bases, etc., if we look at this diagram, um, we definitely have a pyramid. We have, in fact, looking at the bottom, it's a pentagon, so we, it is a pentagonal pyramid. Vertices, if we count the vertices, count the points, I count one, two, three, four, five, and six of them. Vertices are A, B, C, D, E, and F. Six different points. Edges, I count one, two, three, four, and five on the base. But there's also an additional one, two, three, four, and five connecting the base up to the top vertex. So there are a total of ten edges. We'll just name a couple of them, like A, B, going from A to B would be an edge. Going from F to E would be an edge. In addition, there's a total of 10, so there's eight more of those. Looking at bases, there's only one base, that pentagon on the bottom, pentagon A, B, C, D, E, we consider our sole and only base. A net. A net is going to be a two-dimensional representation of a 3D shape. Essentially, it's what happens when you unfold a 3D shape. Looking at this one here, we have a rectangular lateral face and two bases that are circles. So going back to our definitions here, two bases that are circles, rounded rectangular face, it's going to be a um, cylinder. So we'd say that this net right here, three-dimensional figure, it's going to be a cylinder. A cross section is the thin two-dimensional slice of a 3D object. Think about cutting a piece of cheese very, very thin with a double-bladed knife. You're going to look at what shape that thin, thin, thin two-dimensional slice is. For example, in this diagram here, if I trace the thin, thin, thin slice that we cut out of this pentagonal pyramid, we get a pentagon if we cut straight across. So we'd say that the cross section is a pentagon. Similarly, right here, if we cut a cone, but we cut straight downwards, it's going to cut a piece that looks like that that I've highlighted in red. We end up cutting a triangle. Now, are those the only cross sections that we can cut? Certainly not. If I want to go ahead and cut, let's say, horizontally across this cone, I'm going to end up cutting a circle out of this thing. If I cut horizontally, I might cut a circle out of this thing. If we cut in another direction, maybe... Um, maybe off diagonally like this, I might end up cutting a oval out of this thing. There are several pieces we can cut, several cross sections. Assignment for tonight is from your book. Um, what we have 
highlighted down here some called the hypercube and we're going to get into that when we look at the film flatland but that's something it's a hypothetical fourth dimensional shape we'll be talking about that next time anywho have a great day get your homework done take care